Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the second session of the basics of wheelchair racing equipment. Uh, today we are focusing on tires and my name is Lily Jagodzinski from Move United. Um, I wanted to also mention that today's session will be recorded as well as streamed to Facebook and all attendees are currently on mute right now just to minimize distractions, but you'll have plenty of opportunities to ask questions to our, our special guests and, and panelists, Daniel and Krieger here. Uh, so at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button and you can type in a question at any point in time throughout the presentation and we'll try to answer it live during this session. If you haven't already checked out our Move United United Adapt at Home page. Here you'll see a list of a variety of virtual events that are happening, uh, training and education, specific topics, and a variety of sports activities. So we encourage you to tag us on social media at Move United Sport and use the hashtag Adapt at Home as well to see us how you're moving. And now I'd like to introduce our uh, panelists again. Uh, we have Daniel Romanchuk here. He is an esteemed athlete, uh, world champion, marathon major winner, and Paralympian. And Krieger Skabort, he is also a Paralympian, an SB winner, and an Ironman champion too. And we're so excited to have you guys here again. Uh, you're so knowledgeable and we're excited for another session to learn about tires. I'd like to now turn it over to Kim Romanchuk, who is Daniel's manager, as well as an online science teacher. And she's gonna be running us through our uh, session today. Thank you, Kim, go ahead. All right. Um, so yeah, it's probably the teacher in me coming out. Um, but uh, Daniel and Krieger are going to be uh, showing a bunch of uh, really important uh, skills that you need to be able to do um, as far as uh, changing tires and that type of stuff. Um, and uh, if I can give you one piece of advice, especially if you're a young athlete, make sure that you practice these yourself. Um, at, at home, um, it's one thing to watch it on a screen and go, oh yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks easy. Um, but I could promise you probably the first time you're gonna have trouble with a tire is gonna be right before the start of a big race or in the middle of a big race and things aren't quite so easy then if you haven't practiced it. So um, I just really encourage you to take the time and make it part of your routine. Daniel practices changing a tire in his chair. It's part of his training um, because sometimes that can mean the difference between uh, being on a podium and and not even, potentially even not finishing at all. So um, to just an encouragement to put this stuff to use, um, especially while you have time right now, there's not meets and races and that kind of stuff going on. So it's a good time to focus on um, some other things while you have time. Um, so Daniel, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, thank you. Uh, and so, um, if I could get the, uh, the slideshow up, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and so as, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, today's session is going to be on tires. Uh, and so there are two different kinds of tires that go on a racing wheelchair, uh, and they are clincher tires or tubular or so up tires. Uh, and so um, the type of tire also um, goes with a special type of rim. And so if you have a clincher rim, you can only use a clincher tire. You cannot use a clincher rim with a tubular tire. Uh, and the same, same way around uh, the other way. Uh, so going into clincher tires, uh, they are like a typical bike tire. Um, there is a, a tube on the inside. Uh, on the left picture, it's been pulled out of the tire a bit, uh, so you can actually see it. Uh, so that is where the air goes. Um, and then there is, of course, the tire. Uh, the tire is a C-shaped piece of rubber. Uh, and on both of its free edges, it has what's called a bead. Uh, and that bead acts kind of like a hook. Uh, and it actually hooks onto uh, a part of the rim. Uh, you can see on the right picture, it's uh, labeled rim hook. Uh, so that actually hooks underneath part of the rim uh, and holds the tire on the, uh, the rim. Because of those beads, uh, you actually need special tools to help change these uh, when you need to change a tire. 
And uh, those tools are called tire levers. They are in yellow. Um, and uh, also one more thing to note about clinchers uh, is there, uh, there will never be a clincher uh, carbon rim uh, just because you need because you need those tire levers. Uh, something I will hopefully remember to touch on later is uh, that the tire levers can damage a carbon fiber rim, uh, and so um, that is something to uh, to always keep in mind um, is to never use tire lever on a carbon fiber rim. Uh, so going over to uh, tubular tires, um, they are a little bit different. Uh, so why it's called a tubular tire is that the tube comes pre-installed inside of a tire casing. Uh, the only, the only uh, evidence from the outside uh, that there even is a tube is the valve stem. Uh, so if you cut on either side of the valve stem, you can actually pull that tube out of the tire casing. Um, and so that's kind of why it's called a tubular tire um, is because it has the tube already installed. Um, and so actually why it's called, uh, sometimes called a sew up tire, uh, is it's usually easiest I think to see from a, a cross sectional view. Uh, so if I could get the, uh, the next slide, that'd be great, thank you, thank you. Um, and so that's easiest to see from, uh, like I mentioned, a, a cross section of a tire. Uh, and so these two pictures on the top are both the same. Uh, it's just that the right one has been drawn on. Uh, you can see starting at the very center, uh, you have the tube just like on a clincher uh, tire. Uh, that's just where the air goes. Um, and then moving out, you have the tire casing. Uh, so that is some reinforced cloth. It is labeled in yellow right now. Uh, so I mentioned that's just some reinforced cloth. Uh, so that is folded around the tire uh, and folded in on itself. And then the two edges are sewn together. Uh, and you can see that stitch is in green. And then on the, uh, the very outside, there is uh, some cloth seam tape. Uh, to cover over that the uh, the stitches, and uh, so the cloth seam tape is actually what uh, will be in contact when uh, with the glue when you glue a tubular tire onto a rim. Uh, on the other side of the seam tape, uh, you can see on the other side of the tire, I should say, um, is the rubber in red. Uh, and so that is the tread of the tire. And so that's the area of the tire that's actually gonna come in contact with the road. Um, if you look at the bottom picture, you can actually see some of those stitches on the inside of the tire. Um, and uh, I, think that's, uh, I think that's it for this slide. Uh, so you can actually, uh, I guess, you can see that uh, I mentioned being able to pull the tube out of the, uh, the tire casing. Uh, and that is only possible uh, when you cut the tire uh, completely on both sides of the valve stem. Uh, and that's because uh, this is a, a magnified view of the valve stem. Uh, and you can see that, again, both pictures are the same. It's just one has been drawn on. Um, but all of the parts in uh, this area around the valve stem are actually uh, bonded together. Uh, so you can see that the tube is again in purple. Uh, there's a small hole in the tube for the air to come in and out of uh, through the valve stem. Uh, you can see if you go up from the, uh, the tube, you have the tire casing again uh, in yellow. Uh, again, fold it on itself. And then on the very top, there is the cloth seam tape. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, uh, all of these parts, uh, the valve stem, the uh, seam tape, the uh, tire casing, and the tube are all bonded together here. Uh, and if you look closely enough, I think you can actually see some of that dried up uh, adhesive. 
um, in the, uh, the very center. Uh, and so that's kind of uh, the, the only part where on a tubular tire, everything is bound together. Um, and so I think with that, uh, if we could get the next slide, I think I'm gonna uh, basically to, uh, to summarize everything, um, going over clinchers, uh, they are made out of a thicker rubber. Uh, so it is uh, less prone to getting punctures due to debris on the road, uh, but that more rubber uh, also just makes everything very heavy. Um, and so they're harder to, uh, to accelerate with. Um, they are, however, cheap to repair uh, because usually when you actually need to change, a, uh, change the tire of a clincher, uh, actually, what you will only really do is um, be changing the tube. Uh, the tire itself, usually, you can just keep on. Um, and uh, But as I mentioned, it requires special tools and is time intensive uh, to change. Uh, so overall, they're pretty good for an introductory setup. Um, going to tubulars, uh, they are again lightweight, uh, so they're they're easier to uh, accelerate with, um, just due to uh, to less weight. Uh, the replacement is fast and easy, uh, but it is expensive because you will not actually be uh, be changing out the tube in these uh, because it, everything is uh, all wrapped up in one uh, one uh, sort of package, um, and so. Uh, because of, they're fast to change and they're lightweight, uh, the tubular tires are what uh, usually a, a competitive racer would be using. Uh, so with that, I think I'm going to hand it off to Krieg. Yo, wow, Daniel, that is a great explanation. And I love how you were uh, doing the dissections on the on the tubulars. I, I hope you had some use of the, out of those tubulars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or are you still going to use it for something? Uh, sorry? Or are you going to still going to use it for something? Uh, those, those will be uh, be used to coat hand rings uh, later on. Great stuff. See, there's there's a good tip to know as well, right? Uh, yeah, well, like you say, um, those tubulars are expensive, right? And um, boy, yeah, did I feel the expense of, of those tubulars long ago uh, when I when I still lived in South Africa. You know, we... We, uh, we couldn't afford just a whole bunch of that, of the tubeless, and I wasn't sponsored, definitely. Um, so I, you know, I first started out with, uh, with just with regular clinchers. And uh, as, you know, things uh, progress, you want to get faster, faster, everyone else tells you, yeah, you're, you're on the wrong tires. You've got to be on tubeless, buddy. So eventually, it, uh, I changed to tubeless. Uh, but then really quickly, I was... Uh, coming to the point of, I cannot keep replacing these tubulars because the roads in South Africa wasn't that clean uh, as we would find here. Um, so I decided to, I'm also gonna dissect a tubular after I had a flat tire. Uh, so the idea was to, to fix the tube inside the tubular. Now, uh, boy, that's not an easy job. So what I did was I aired the tire up. If, if it wasn't a completely flat, it was a small little uh, pinch in the, in the tube. I found the hole by dipping it in the bathtub, you know, aired it up. And, and then I, 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 I track it. I track, okay, the, there's the bubble. So it must be somewhere there. And then I use a, a sharp uh, knife or scissors or whatever, pull the, the, the seam out. Uh, out off and then pull the tire out, maybe like a like an eight to ten inches wide section, so I could pull the tube out again in the water, like you would, you know, just fix a regular tubular tire or a, a tube of a tire, and then uh, back in and grab my mom's uh, uh, needles and stuff, and um, oh, and not um, uh, what did I dental floss dental floss to use the as, as my needlework 
uh, dental floss is tough. I mean, you you can you can go you can pull hard on a dental floss, and you can air that tire up to to maybe 10, 10 bar again or one fifty psi, and then you just hope it's not going to pop again right there at the same place, and you really hope and pray you're not going to use your needle and make another hole in another place. <laughs> so, but it worked, it worked, and um, yeah. I finished, I fixed a lot of tires until I moved to the US where it was still uh, expensive, but a little bit more affordable. Um, but uh, yeah, talking about inflating it and airing it up, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about um, the different inflators we have for, we, uh, you know, we use for uh, convenient wise, let's start with the easiest one for us guys. It's, the, it's, a, it's a chargeable inflator. Now this is a Ryhobi. These, um, they are, I mean, they're pretty small. It's like a hand, the hand size drill, uh, cordless drill. Um, same basic principle. Um, it's light, it's uh, easy to travel with. Um, it's got a lithium ion battery. The battery is uh, rechargeable. Um, the most expensive part of this would be, I would say that the battery and the, and the charger um and uh this can go up to about 150 psi which is you know it's it's it's, it's plenty it's plenty i don't think you're going to need any more um the one thing about the the battery you have to carry it in your uh carry on uh luggage when you when you fly it's not it's not allowed to go into your um uh into your main the main luggage luggage yeah, as I said, easy and as a gauge on the right side. Uh, these you can find that at um, Home Depot or any place, hardware shops, Ace Hardware. They kind of they cheap, twenty nine bucks, I think, just for the for the uh, for the comp for the inflator itself. And then, of course, the more expensive part of it is the uh, the charger and the battery. So I think any everyone should have something like this. You get different kinds. This is not the only one. This is just a good example. This one that uh, a lot of us are using now because it's so light and easy to, to, to travel with. Um, and let's uh, flip to the next one and we'll look at um, the foot pump. The foot pump or long ago, I used to use a hand pump, but foot pump is is probably not the ideal thing for us guys um, because uh, it's hard to get your feet um, rested on top of the the bottom part of it and hold it in one place. So the foot pump is ideal if you have someone, uh, a big team, and you have a lot of coaches and people that can help you just to uh, run from one chair to the other and and uh, air it up for you um, by using a you know an able-bodied person. Uh, these foot pumps can go really high pressure. They can go up to 200, maybe some of them over 200 PSI. Uh, so that's a lot of air. Um, the one thing about it, of course, you know, it's a little bit cumbersome to travel with. Uh, they're in general not that heavy. It's just, you know, they take, take up um, a, lot of, a lot of space. So when I use one of these, I just, you know, I'm an amputee. I just grab the bottom part of it and it goes under my legs and uh, I, 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 it's almost like crunch, I you do crunches and I, and I pull it down from, from, from top to bottom where able body would stand up and push it down. So foot pumps, um, then um, let's flip to the next option and that can, that's gonna be your, your uh, on the go thing, that's gonna be your CO2 cartridge. Um, so those cartridges are really small. They, uh, it, I would say it's about five inches uh, tall or long. And uh, you get it in different sizes, depending on, you know, what kind of, if you have a mountain bike, I think that they are between uh, 12, 16 and 22 grams. So um, us guys, we, we most, mostly use the 16, uh, 16 gram. Um, it is actually more for a, um, uh, flat when you, when you have a flat tire emergency situation, um, and uh, so but you always with this you always need the adapter as well. So as you can see, the the top of the CO2 is is threaded, and then the adapter will fit 
according to what kind of tire or wheel you use, uh, that is going to be um, your decision on what kind of adapter you're going to use for this. So when you do travel, you either you put someone in your racing chair and um, and but be sure you have it somewhere safe. I like to have it um, behind me on my in my in my spare tire, um, and also. I think it's important to make sure when once you use it, uh, just get rid of it because you cannot use it twice. I've had the situation where I, where I thought I had a fresh one with me, and I never changed my uh, the CO2 cartridge. Oh boy, you feel so stupid and you feel so bad then, because then you just sit there and you don't have any any um, any air. So be sure when you um, yeah when when you're done with it, replace it, replace it with a with a new one. They're cheap. I mean, you can buy a box of these at Amazon. Like forty, I usually usually buy a box of forty-eight, and it's not uh, it's not an arm and a leg, um, and they and will go far. You know, if they if you need them and you have them, that's a great thing to have. Okay, where are we now? Are we going to um, from inflators? We're gonna go to valves. Okay, all right. So. Uh, first slide on the valve. This is a Schrader valve um, and adapter. The, valve, the Schrader, Schrader valve is on the left side. The adapter is on the right side. So I'm sure you guys have seen, seen these valves. They, they're kind of a little bit bulky. They're a little bit bigger. They got a thread on top and um, there's a, a tiny little needle on the inside. And that little needle is basically a plunger or a valve stem the, the the valve inside the valve stem that regulates the air uh, flow um, either in or out once it's in it cannot come out unless you um, have the um, the adapter if you look on the right side of the adapter right in the center of that adapter there is a there's a small little pin and that pin actually presses down into the valve and and uh, press the that head in so the air can move from from the pump um, or from the um, inflator to the to the tire or the, the tube. We don't use these on on racing chairs really because they're bigger it's more on mountain bikes or day chairs and on cars or autos or that's where we, you will see it more more so enough about the Schraders let's jump to what we really are going to look for and those are the the Presta valves. All right, so the Presta is, um, it's, it's kind of a long skinny one. It goes more with a, with a tire or the tube you're going to use. Um, the, the valve stem, as you can see there, it's the silver shiny part of it. And it's got a little head on top and uh, then usually a cap. Um, you, we don't always use a cap because a lot of times you don't have time to, um, to remove the cap if you have a flat tire or if you have you if you use a valve extension, but um, you it's it's up to you if you want to use that. Um, so if you um, take the valve stem and you um, remove basically just the valve from the valve stem, you'll with with a, a needle nose pliers or whatever, you'll come out with on the right side in the pink. You will with a spin circle you will see that the, that is the valve right so that's the presto valve so that valve uh, fits perfectly inside the, the valve stem um, so in order to in general when the valve when there's no air in the tire though that little head of the valve on top that little head will just uh, bounce up and down you know either direction um, but once you um, once you put air in, it's going to stay in one position because there's air pressure then. So what you want to do is you unscrew uh, only the top um, counterclockwise uh, until it's up in the up position like that. And then you have your adapter, fit your adapter over and you air it up until you have your, your uh, necessary amount of air pressure in your tire or in your tube. Um, and then uh, you turn that little head clockwise again until you it, it bottoms out um, right on top of the basically on the shoulders of of the valve. Uh, the Prestas are um, basically the only thing that I know of that um, I don't know the guy that that 
uh, invented the Presta valve, Mr. Presta. <laughs> He's probably um, laughing along today because uh, I haven't seen any other kind of valve for, for bicycles. Um, next, we will go to what you need to air the, the Presta valve uh, is that valve adapter. So the Presta valve adapter is, um, it's really, um, you can you get different shapes and sizes of these um they are made by different companies of course um but what we use mostly are the ones in the l shape just because we um for um uh, a carbon fiber disc wheel it's more convenient to use the one in the l shape like this um and uh, so they can fit in better so um, that'll fit in front of the valve, uh, the valve of the adapter from that's coming from your compressor, which is usually a Presta, I mean a Schrader. Um, and that little L-shaped head uh, will then will then fit over your um, Presta valve. And uh, then you just have to have it in the right position all the way over the, the shoulders of the, the Preston valve and air it up, air it up. And uh, if there's any leaks while you do it, while you're busy um, airing it up, then, um, then it's possible that the, that the valve uh, rubber, the O-ring and the inside, on the right side, you, you can, you'll see that photo on the right side of um, the, you can see that rubber is damaged. Um, it doesn't last forever, unfortunately. I have to say the 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 whole um, valve, the L-shaped part of it is metal, and that lasts forever. You don't have issue, issues with that. But the rubber in the inside doesn't have. You know that that's only only you know I would say much, maybe not even a season that I use one and I have to replace it. Um, Okay, so that was um, the Presta adapter. What's next? Are we, are we on? Um, I think we're going to get to this a little bit later, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, I, uh, I, every time I, uh, you know, pump up my tires, uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, I, I won't be able to get up to the pressure that I want. And, you know, I have to always go through, okay, you know, am I getting a good seal? And usually it's the, uh, it's the adapter uh, with the, just that, that little O-ring has been uh, chewed up a little bit too much. Um, so, um, now uh, that we've kind of gone over uh, the different kinds of tires um, and things and how to inflate uh, a tire, uh, now it is uh, basically uh, when do you change a tire? Um, and that is, of course, if it's flat. Um, that that's a no, uh, you know, no flex in that. Um, however, if you say show up to practice one morning and um, say you see on your uh, your tire that there's uh, some cords showing through the uh, the tread. Uh, on the tire, um, that's a sign that you may need to change it soon. Um, something else you can look for is uh, either cuts or uh, puncture kind of holes um, in the rubber. Uh, while they may not be a, uh, a flat just yet, uh, they can lead to a flat eventually. Um, and so uh, those are the times where you may want to just uh, you know, start uh, thinking about uh, changing your tire. Um, ultimately, uh, in those scenarios, it's kind of a cost benefit, uh, the cost of a tire versus uh, the possible impact a flat will have uh, on a race or training session. Uh, and so to change a, uh, a flat, um, now that we kind of have know when, um, I'm gonna flat this tire here. Uh, and so taking a tire off, uh, you always want to find the valve stem and go on the other side of it. Uh, so we're going to start on the opposite side of the valve stem. 
Um, and I'm going to, uh, how I do it is I put my fingers on one side of the tire and then my thumb on the other side of the tire. Uh, so I'm um, opposite the valve stem um, and I have my hands in the right position. Uh, then I just start rocking back and forth. I pull the tire, uh, you know, pull and push the tire. Uh, and I'll also, you know, uh, right here is actually where I put a, uh, some glue. And so it's a little bit hard to grab there. Uh, so I might try and find an area where there is uh, no glue and kind of work from there. Um, I, di I did a really good uh, job gluing these on. Usually this is not uh, that much of a problem. Um, that's one of, the, one of the things that you have to, uh, to look out for um, when you are changing a tire is, or when you're gluing a tire, I should say, is uh, you know, how much glue you use. Uh, the more glue you use, the harder it is gonna be to, uh, to get off, but the, uh, the less likely it is to roll uh, off of the rim if you're going around a turn. Um, there we go. Uh, and so uh, I just wanna work uh, on both sides. Uh, you can just go really on one side up until the valve. Um, uh, so you can see I'm having a, a decent amount of trouble here. Uh, so one thing to always um, keep in mind is if you take your uh, tires to a bike shop to get uh, glued on, uh, a lot of bike shops will use a lot of glue to uh, adhere the tires on. And you, uh, again, uh, you never want to use a uh, tire lever on a carbon fiber rim uh, because that will damage the, uh, the rim. There we go. Once you oh. get uh, a certain amount of it off, it will become a, a lot easier to, uh, to come off. There we go. Now I've reached that point where it's uh, just a matter of kind of pulling the tire away from the, uh, the rim. And you can see I'm getting close to the valve stem. So I'm gonna stop there and then just start pulling on the other side. And again, you can see that once you get it all started, uh, it's pretty easy to, uh, to finish the job. Uh, it's just getting that first bit uh, can be a little bit of a, uh, an ordeal. All right, so we have a, a tire off. Uh, now, uh, something that I would do is inspect the, uh, the rim of the tire all the way around the wheel, um, especially if it was a large impact that caused the flat. Uh, say I went over a rock, uh, into a ditch. Um, I've done a lot of things. <laughs> um, so I always want to inspect the, uh, the rim to make sure that there's no structural damage. Um, and uh, after I've done that, it is uh, time to get a, uh, a new tire and put it on. Um, and so I've got a, a new tire here. And if I just take it out of the box like this and try to put it on, I will not be able to. Uh, so these need to be stretched after they're taken out of the box. Um, in order for you to be able to put them on. Uh, the recommended way of stretching them, uh, according to the manufacturers, is to inflate it up to its, uh, near its maximum PSI and let it sit for a while. Um, but you can manually stretch it uh, if you do not have that kind of time. Uh, but if you do that, uh, be careful not to stress the area around the valve. Uh, there, there are many ways to manually stretch it. Um, I kind of uh, just 
do sort of an archer, uh, sort of look like an archer, uh, and I just pull on both sides. I know uh, Krieger has a different way. Um, a lot of, of this is just figuring out what works for you. Um, but actually, this, even though it just came out of the box, is already stretched. Uh, we stretched this before um, the session, uh, so it uh, isn't too tight right now. Uh, and so again, putting it on, I know Krieger mentioned this little, uh, the cap, you want to take that off uh, and then hit your wheel and putting a tire on is the opposite of taking it off. Uh, and so you always want to start at the valve stem uh, and then you just work it on uh, both ways until it is, uh, it'll get to a point where it's kind of, it's hard to uh, put on. Uh, there are kind of two techniques once it stops sliding on. Um, and the, the one that I typically do uh, use is I put my thumb pretty much in the rim of the tire, of the wheel, I should say, then grab the tire with my fingers and just pull the tire on. Uh, you can do the opposite and um, push it on with uh, your thumbs. Uh, and so, trying to get a good view of this here, sorry. Uh, and so you can push it on with your thumb as well. Um, I have uh, come up with a uh, sort of method that uh, once I, you know, if I'm having difficulty getting it on uh, by myself, um, I actually uh, will pin the tire against uh, the wheel. And so I'm, I'm literally laying on my wheel right now. Uh, but that frees both of my hands to uh, work on one side of the tire. And um, then it uh, is much easier to get, uh, get the rest of it on. Uh, one important thing to note is just sometimes you just need to rest. Um, you know, it, it can be quite a, a fight sometimes to get one of these on. Um, just give yourself a rest. Make sure to hold the tire uh, on both sides where it's not fully on yet. Uh, and just give yourself a little bit of a rest and then try again. Uh, if it still doesn't go, uh, then you might want to try and restretch the tire. Uh, but now that we have a tire on a wheel, uh, so before I glue it, uh, something that I do is I always make sure that the valve is pointing straight at the, the center of the hub. Uh, if it is off to one side, uh, say if it was pointing off to this side, uh, that means that it's uh, a little bit uh, tensioned one way or the other. Um, so you actually take the way that it's pointing, put both hands that on that side of the, uh, the valve. And I'm actually picking up the tire out of the rim. And I'm just working that excess around to the other side of the valve. Um, so that'll equalize the, uh, the stress that the valve is under. Um, so now it's nice and straight and pointed directly at the hub. Uh, so now it's time to glue. I've got my glue, woo. I've got my glue here. Um, and something you always wanna make sure um, and I, I mentioned uh, a lot of stresses being on the, the valve, uh, valve stem. Uh, and to help prevent any uh, stresses being on it, I go on, uh, put a little dot of glue on both sides of the valve stem. Um, so there's one on one side and I'll do the other side after I've worked around the tire. Uh, and how much glue you have or you, you, you use 
and uh, how much, um, you know, how often you put a, uh, a bead of it uh, is really up to the athlete. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the more you use, the less likely it is to roll off. However, uh, it will be harder to get off. Um, so I have uh, kind of found a, uh, uh, the thing that works for me is I have the, uh, the hand ring attachments as a guide and I go every half hand ring attachment. Uh, and so I will do uh, a bit of glue on a hand ring attachment point, which is right here, and one in between the, uh, the hand ring attachment points. Uh, so, almost done here. Um, and again, when you're uh, around to the other side, do not forget to, uh, to put another one on the other side of the valve stem because uh, we don't want that to un undergo too much uh, stress. All right, so that's glued. And once I put the glue away, I want to check the tire for two things. Uh, one is to make sure that the valve stem is still centered, uh, which it uh, is pretty much uh, good right now. Uh, and then you want to ch check and make sure that you have an equal amount of seam tape on uh, both sides of the wheel. Uh, and so how you check that is actually, I like to put, uh, you know, around 10 to 20 pounds of air into the tire. I don't put too much in it because uh, that then it gets hard to, uh, to handle. Um, but then I just look around the whole tire and make sure that I have an equal amount of seam tape on. And you can see there's some exposed uh, seam tape here. Uh, what you do is you, uh, you have that spot in, uh, you take that spot and you just manually grab the tire and roll it a bit uh, so that you have an equal amount of seam tape on, uh, you know, around the whole tire. Uh, and then uh, you would need to pretty much just push, put it up to full pressure uh, once you've made sure that everything is nice and centered. Uh, so that, that is not full pressure. I'm just uh, keeping things short here. Um, but you just put it up to full pressure and then put it off to the side and let the glue dry. Uh, this is not like super glue or anything like that. Uh, it will not set up uh, that fast. So you need to make sure to let it dry uh, before you use it or you may end up rolling the, uh, the tire. So um, now that I have, have used up my, uh, my only new tire, uh, how, how do I order another one? And what should I uh, take into consideration, Krieg? Good question. Uh, Daniel, you did such a good job there. I think uh, you're gonna, you'll be surprised how many folks are gonna be on you at the next track, track event. They're gonna say, Daniel, hey man, come change my tire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> All right, so um, good one, I like it. Yeah, if, you're, if a tire roll, it's not good. You want, you want your tire on. And uh, I've had that before as well, where the tire wasn't on well and it rolls and then you just sit with uh, another tire to change. Um, but yeah, let's look a little bit about um, tires and how, what kind of tires are there and what we have to look for. Um, so, um, okay, so for instance now, say I want to do um, either a New York City Marathon or I want to do um, um, a 
a, a flat race that's got a very smooth uh, road, say like, um, uh, not, in, not flat now, but Peachtree Road Race, where it's really smooth, or I have a track event where I do um, a race where you're totally not on the road. So in a marathon, you will go obviously for bigger tires, right? Because um, the cities are, are loaded with potholes and uh, there's a lot of rocks and there's a manholes and manhole covers. You have to uh, dodge along the way. Um, so if you do look at um, different kind of tires, you first um, want to want to just want to know a little bit more about what the specifications are of different tires. So the tubular tires are usually running from uh, it's a 700 T tire, okay, as it on your screen, and then that's the size of the tire. So I mean that's the size of the wheel. That's the general size of a racing wheel. It's 700 T. If your um, the width of the tire is specified in millimeters with all these tires, so you can see that it's 18 millimeters. A lot of them, some 19 to 25, 19 to 25, then some are 23 millimeters wide. So that width is, um, if you look from the top of the tire when it's aired up, it's um, it's the, the 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 measurement or a distance from one edge to the other. So. Long ago, uh, I would say most tires was a lot smaller. Um, we used to run 18 millimeters mostly, and um, tires that's got a, a, a low weight, like a one. You can see there 190 grams. That is that is a pretty lightweight tire. It says marathon, um, but if I do a, a race like New York City marathon. I will go for something a little bit more heavier. Um, if you can see the fourth one in line is, is the Continental Competition. It's a 250 gram tire, so it's a little bit heavier, so it can handle a little bit more of the rough roads. And uh, you have your different sizes in width, the 19 to 25 millimeters. So 19 might be okay, but some guys would say a bigger guy would go for 23 or 25 millimeter. It will just be a safer tire to roll on, um, on a marathon where if you have a lot of rough areas. Uh, okay, now I say right next, maybe to the next weekend, I'm going to do a flat race, smooth road surface, and um, it's going to be no, not so many risks. To, to have a flat tire. So you might go for something lighter, like the, the, um, the Panaracer Ultima track or the Ultima, I mean, the Panaracer Marathon, which is a 190 gram tire. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit narrower. Um, but the nice thing about this tire, it is kind of versatile because you can use it on the track, track and road um, as well. So a lot of these tires are uh you know it's not one thing for one for one event um you can you know depending on your weight and your size you can you can experiment to see what works best for you this is just a general idea and i just use continental and panaracer as as examples but there are many other uh tires that you can you know uh you know like victoria or kenda or um um uh, Schwalbe tires. Um, so there's plenty to choose from. You just got to find what's what's good for you. Uh, when you get to the front wheel of, of your racing chair, there's not that many of um, um, options for us. Like here, I, I have the Panaracer Rapide, the Victoria Junior, and then the Schwalbe. Um, so the two the two tubulars are what we mainly use um, on the front wheel. The Panaracer is 18 millimeter, so it's a lightweight tire. The Victoria is a 21 millimeter. It's a little bit more durable, um, quite a bit more durable than the, than the Panaracer. Um, I personally pr prefer the, the uh, Victoria on, on heavier roads. Sorry, sorry for the spelling there, the, the three T's, but um, it, uh, my hand slipped. But uh, anyway, so those are your two options for um, for the for the Panaracer. I mean, for the for the tubular front wheel. Then, um, depending what kind of fork you have on your racing chair, you can go for a bigger wheel. Now, a lot of guys starting to like the bigger 
the bigger tires as, as well, and those are mostly clinchers. Um, you'll see there the bottom one, the swallow bay tubeless. Tubeless tire, does, this tire is actually a tube, or it could be a tube and a tire like a clincher, or it could be a tubeless. Uh, it's also 20 inches, um, the size of the wheel, and, um, and, but it can go like a big tire, 23 to 28 millimeter um, 20, uh, and in the width. Now the, some guys just feel they roll so much better, of course. Uh, very, very small chance you're going to get a flat in those tires. So they are uh, bulletproof almost, but your fork needs to be, uh, be able to handle um, those um, bigger tires. I know uh, company um, Carbon Bike USA, they make the bigger ones, uh, bigger forks and uh, top end and um, Eagle mostly for the smaller, smaller tires. So these tires you can all buy it at companies like Sport Aid, um, How I Roll Sports, BikeTires.com. You can even go on Amazon or you can go direct to your manufacturer um, and see what kind of options they have because they always sell tires that includes um, the racing chair when you buy a racing chair with wheels. So in short, that's about it. For, uh, um, uh, a lightweight course on tires. Um, I don't know where we're next. I think we're gonna have some action here, Daniel. What are you? What are you up to next? Are you gonna? I think. I think actually, um, we have run ourselves almost out of time here. So we're, we are going to hold off on the uh, how to change a tire in your, uh, while you're still in your chair, we'll do that next um, week uh, when we do the wheel session. Uh, so we just wanted to have, a, there are a couple of questions that have been asked. And so we wanted to have uh, time to, uh, to get to those um, since uh, you guys are here live with us. Um, so the first question, um, Krieger, since you did the, uh, the inflating um, section, um, we'll put this one to you. Uh, when I inflate my tires, I have trouble getting the pump to stay attached to the valve. Sometimes I hold it, but sometimes the valves get the valve gets bent. Any tips? Uh, before I get there, don't forget next week because if Daniel's going to do that tire change, you've got to come back and watch this. That's going to I, I, I'm I'll be back for it. So I'll be back to, to watch you, Daniel, in action. So. <laughs> A uh, good question about the valve that, uh, you know, the short part of the valve tip can bend when you, especially when it's all the way out. Um, I, I suggest maybe don't, you know, when you, when you unscrew the, the tip of the valve, maybe don't go all the way out um, because the, the, the way you come in with the angle of your, your valve adapter might hook it and uh, there's not a lot of space to get in there. Um, and, and one thing to take in consideration when you buy a wheel, make sure the wheel have enough space to get the, the, the valve, the, the valve adapter onto the valve. Uh, so you don't hook it and bend it. So, but yeah, that is, it can be, but if you do bend it, you can use needlepoint pliers and also bend it back again slightly. Don't ram on it, but you can bring it back a little bit. Great. Um that it is frustrating. Um, I remember having a lot of trouble with inflators uh, early on. Um, so, um, so Daniel, uh, to you and actually but to both of you, um, uh, when you're in your racing chair during a race, um, where do you store your extra uh, tires and your CO2 cartridges? Uh, so I, um, I used to basically tape them uh, tape them both together uh, and just again tape that uh, that bundle wherever it would fit on uh, on my main frame. Um, sometimes it was underneath my my kneeling pan. Uh, sometimes it was uh, right along the main beam. Um, so that re it really changed uh, wherever it kind of fit best. Um, uh, but now I actually have a uh, a special. Um, trunk, I guess you could say, uh, on the, the back of my, uh, uh, by, I guess you could say behind my seat, um, that I actually, uh, it's a carbon fiber uh, bucket basically that has been uh, there so I can just reach back in, I have everything stored in there. I've got my, my tools and uh, my tires there as, uh, as well. I remember, um early on, uh, we had actually modified a little, uh, it was a, um, uh, 
oh, I'm losing the name for it now, a camelback, um, a camelback backpack. Oh, and yep. we had modified that and pinned it to the back, to the back of Hull Street. And then the, the tire went in there along with the hydration system as well. So that yep. was another way. Krieger, where, what about you? Where do you stick yours? Uh, I usually have my, I, I'm not as fancy as Daniel with, uh, with a, a compartment back behind my racing chair yet. I might get there one day, but uh, I just use tape and I, the back cross member behind my chair, I tape it around the cross member. It can get a little bit tricky for some guys. If you cannot reach there, I can luckily reach behind me. As long as you can reach where, where the tire is. And just remember, you don't, when it's a race situation, when I train and I have a flat tire, I try to bring my, the, the broke or the, the tire that's damaged back with me. But when I race, you don't have to pick up your tire and bring it back with you. There's, there's cleanup teams that's going to do that for you after the race. So as long as you just can be able to change it and get going again. All right, great. Thank you, guys. Lily, I think we're going to turn it back over to you. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I was having technical issues getting back on. Um, but thank you so much, Kim, Daniel, and Krieger, for joining us today. I just learned so much about tires and that you should not use certain things on carbon fiber. So thank you for that. I will now stop ruining all of my bikes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I appreciate you guys being here. We're really looking forward to next week's session as well. There are still some topics that are out there that people are really raring to get to. So uh, next week, tune in at this time. Time, and we'll have Daniel and Krieger here uh, to share us more of their knowledge. Um, we encourage you guys to follow them on social media and reach out. We also encourage you to take the survey that we just put in our chat box and let us know if there's more topics that you, we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, let us know how we did and tell us what you want to learn more about. But thank you again to Kim and Daniel and Krieger and we're looking forward to next week and thanks for being a part of this session.